Well, it's day one here in Madeira and we've been dropped off in a cloud, which is really nice. Um, it was really warm t-shirt weather down in the valley, down by the beach. Um, and the guy said, bring coats. And they're quite right, you need a proper coat here. It's quite chilly up the top here in the cloud. Everyone's just peeing into the wind currently. Um, as we drop into our first trail of the day, which is supposed to be very slick and very wet and very slippy. Um, and I think we'll be treated to that famous Madeiran ice. So uh, let's get cracking. So I've just completed stage one and it was in a cloud. Uh, I think goggles and glasses are probably not a great idea, but it was peddly in sections, so I afforded the time to wipe them. Um, and I would say, for all you Brits out there, that first stage has kind of Kim Khan downhill vibes. Similar mud, little kind of rollable drop-offs that you can pop off, um, little rock sections and tables and just flowy turns basically on dirt like this which is actually really grippy um i could have gone a lot quicker but you know first stage let's ease into it look at that view uh just finished stage two day one um that was kind of like a wet forest of dean type mud with lots of rock like look at this rock um really sort of polished rock i would say it's kind of like in a leaf and in the wet um like pretty flowy not as steep as in a leaf then, but a lot more rock so if you can ride water world in the wet or big bore in the wet you'll be fine but actually i think walking is going to be more difficult <laughs> bye <laughs> stage three done day one um a bit slippy more of this kind of red stuff um i wouldn't say it was madeira ice though it was just like british slippery time you know um really flowy lots of little drop offs and a couple of gaps um so that was fun um one of the favorites of the day i think um yeah let's go get some food now it's halfway through the day that's stage five done um it's been proper what i would expect from madeira thick dust uh big terms great support and a beautiful sea view the whole way down which was stunning bit of uh, technical rocks and drop-offs um, and just sort of nadgery corners that you just fall into and float around all nicely so um that was beautiful that's exactly what i expect from this place uh, looking forward to number six which is the a bit more of the same but that classic uh, view on the cliff so uh, really excited uh, so that was stage six done and i'm actually really really hyped because that was such a good trail um i think that was the trail where with the famous kind of picture of the cliff um, and I did kind of have a little look and I could see the sea um, when I saw a photographer um, but generally it was like it was flow but like tight corners come up on you really quick and then there'd be like little rock rollers and switchbacks so you can't really ever relax and you can't well I didn't feel like I could really go race pace race pace um, especially not knowing what was around any corner um, but yeah that was definitely my favorite trail of the day and i'm so stoked to be here and i just can't wait to do tomorrow now so yeah bye <laughs> it's now day two um and we're moving uh from location one to location two uh we spent um two nights in the first location um camped out on the beach here um so just a little bit of uh logistics for you everything needs to get packed into one bag uh which I didn't really realise, so all my nice fragile stuff was in hand luggage um, and it's now strapped to the top of a suitcase and being thrown into a van back there um, with everyone else's bags. So kind of have a think about that, you, you really want to get everything in your suitcase 
um, or perhaps what I should have done was taken my fragiles out of my hand luggage, put it in the suitcase, all wrapped in stuff, and then um, put some clothes in my hand luggage. I don't know. Uh, either way, um, now we're going to get a uplift to the top of the hill, ready for day two. So it's day two now, um, and I've done five stages, no, four stages, I don't know. <laughs> we kind of got, uh, we had a pedal up and then a really dusty, rocky descent, um, and then we got the coach up to the top of um, the sort of Machico area, I believe, for riding. Um, and basically, <laughs> hi. <laughs> yeah, and so we got a lift up to the top of the mountain and we've done four stages over there which is all very kind of like not too slippy but kind of moist um, where the clouds kind of over the mountain which is why I haven't done any blogging because it was kind of like a little bit wet um, but actually it was quite grippy um, a lot of pedally stages though um, <clears throat> and our feed station is just there um, after four or five stages now so um, it's been a long day it's like two o'clock um, so uh, where to lies bring food with you because sometimes the feed stations don't happen <laughs> until two o'clock in the afternoon and they've been really pedally so um, I'm really grateful that I took uh, a sort of a sandwich from this morning's breakfast and uh, a couple of pancakes so um, pro tip for you there uh, so yeah uh, and we've got another two more stages to go after an uplift so let's go and eat some food it's day three and we have made it to Funchal which is the capital city of Madeira it's absolutely beautiful although riding in on the roads is pretty hectic um, uh, I basically completely didn't vlog anything from day two because it was a bit of a whirlwind um, the information said we were doing like 700 meters of climbing I thought ah you know that's that's a pretty easy day um, but there were a lot of uplifts which is great um, but it also means there was just like a lot to do like getting on a bus getting off the bus and trying to get ahead so that I wasn't at the back of a 180 strong uh, field uh, trying to ride down tracks that are a bit chewed up um, as it happens I was quite far ahead so that's my other pro tip for you is if you're fit enough try and keep ahead because the tracks will be a lot nicer um, day two was absolutely my favorite um, although they really downplayed um, stage five um, which was pico something or other um, it, basically for the for the fast guys it was about an eight minute track and for uh, people like me it was like a 11 minute track and I wasn't the slowest so prepare yourself for a long one uh, slippy rocks at the top and then like really rough but dry fast trails after that um, but it was it, it is an absolute diamond um, uh, my pro tip for you another pro tip um, bring lots of painkillers day two was pretty savage on people's bodies um, including my own I um, the deep red kind of dust like the deep red dirt has grip but the the deep uh, dust will grab your front wheel and just throw you uh, without a moment's notice um, so bring more painkillers I've uh, taken a hit to the shoulder I've seen a guy walking around with bandages on his leg go walking around with a broken finger um, day two is pretty savage um, but now it's day three it's the adventure day um, I'm super excited to go and hike a bike and go through the tunnels in the mountains so uh, let's go see what that's all about so that was stage one and two done on day three um, they were kind of like loose chundry rock, like big rock and small rock and now we get the Madeira massage, you can demonstrate guys, this is like tiny tiny little steps that are just, wow, they reverberate at a pretty bad resonance. <laughs> 
Adventure Day hiker bike is a proper hiker bike. There's a city somewhere right down there that we started in and then you can kind of see a bit of a ridge line behind me kind of comes all the way up here and round round behind me and it's like mostly um hiker bike bike on the shoulders situation uh, a bit of pushing i'm pretty sure we're about two thirds of the way up and i think we've been going for just over an hour <laughs> So uh, yeah, prepare for maybe a backpack to hook your bike onto and some nice soft shoes. <laughs> Stage three, jungle territory. So day three was easily the best day I've had on a bike, probably ever. <laughs> Although there was a hiker bike and a little traverse, the views were amazing and the last two trails were like the best at trails ever. It was like Surrey on acid, really grippy and flowy. Um, you've probably seen it in John o Jones' video. Um, it was fun as he makes it look really bad. Day four over and done with. Um, trails are pretty wild considering they say they're like a three out of five for technicality and a three out of five for physicalness, but they're peddly, like so peddly. But the the uh, the dirt is beautiful. It's like red loam, like brown powder or whatever, but it's beautiful. Um, but it is a long day. Um, they told us it was a short one, but um, don't believe their lies. Uh, I would say always pack extra food. I went hungry today. We set off on the uplift at 4.30 for the final two trails. And uh, <laughs> hey! How are you? Yeah, good. <laughs> um, and yeah, and now it's like nearly six. So um, needed to have packed more food. But anyway, she's got the speaker on. I'm going to go and follow her. <laughs> so it's day five here in Madeira, the final day. Um, and it's the final day we have to sleep in tents, which I'm so stoked for because, to be honest, the hardest thing has been lack of sleep. Um, so my final kind of pro tip for you is um, you're kind of in these tents and they do provide a map, but they're kind of almost like, they are good, but they're almost like a kind of a judo gymnastics mat type thing, like air, quite thick. Um, and as a side sleeper, I, I did all right for the first couple of days. Um, but after a couple of days um, and getting some sort of crash shoulders and various aches and pains, it became a bit more difficult. So if you have something like a, a little blow up, um, bed to put on top of that, that would be ideal. Um, also bring maybe a sheet or like a mattress protector to sleep on that because I tried sleeping on my uh, towel and that made a big difference as so sleeping on plastic is like not great <laughs> and some of the guys have been waking up like really sweaty and sticky um, so bring a sheet and you do get a blow up pillow which is has been fine for me um, but if you've got room in your suitcase bring another pillow um, otherwise do what I did and just fold up a jumper and put it on your pillow um, but it's the final day on the west side and we get to be in uh, a hotel tonight so uh, beers and mojitos are on and look at that sunrise how cool is that <laughs> So that's it, finish your medal, completed it. Um, <laughs> final, final pro tip for you. Um, always look out for these arrows on the road because there's a lot of people who passed all the way down to the valley and missed the bar at the end. Um, you don't want to do that. Uh, <laughs> so always be on the lookout, take advantage of the beer tokens and have fun. Oh my God, like, I think anyone with a decent level of fitness will be able to do these trails. They're not super, super tech, but they do get a bit sketchy when they're wet, 
or when you try and ride them as fast as you possibly can they get a bit wild because things are loose you know you got this brown powder this kind of like loose dusty loam kind of stuff and then when it's wet it's just slick as anything which is the the famous Madeira ice um, so be on the lookout and always take a coat because you just never know <laughs>